Hey guys, I am sitting here right now with Kim Kleisters, former number one, six Grand Slam titles, over 40 titles, including a couple of Indian Wells titles. Thank you so much for joining me. No, thanks. It's a pleasure to be here in front of this history of my life. <laughs> so I am going to fangirl probably throughout this chat, but I am the exact same age as you. And I have a long history with the Pure Drive as well. So I'm like so stoked to talk about this. Also being females in tennis and talking about gear isn't as common, so I love that we're gonna chat about yeah. rackets and all the kinds of good stuff. So um, you were so excited to see this, and my first question was gonna be about what you were doing, what you're up to this week, but we're gonna jump right into the rackets because I know you were stoked to see that model right at the end. So tell me about your origin story with Babylon and how you started using the Pure Drive. Um, how I, this started, I have to uh, go back a long time. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was, I think, about 15, 16 years old um, when I was playing in Italy. Um, I was travel. I traveled there with my dad, and um, there was a representative from uh, uh, Babalat who was um, there. And my father, because I was playing with the with the gut, and because it was quite costly, and I was starting to hit the ball a little bit harder. And you know, they were teaching me how to hit, you know, play with a little bit more spin. So I was breaking some uh, some strings more often. So my dad went up to the representative and uh, his name was Luca and and was like, um, listen, my daughter, she keeps breaking all these strings and you know, it's, it's getting pretty costly. And is there any interest in you maybe, you know, giving her some strings? And um, and then Luca said, listen, the racket, we have a, a Babolat racket and we would love to send her some. And then, you know, if you like the racket, then we, you know, we can think about a, a bigger deal. So forward, I guess about 10 days later or something, I'm at the Federation in, in Antwerp in Belgium and um, this box arrived and I'm sitting on the court and my coach, you know, brings me, you know, a couple of the different models. And as soon as he opened the bag around the pure drive, I was like, that's the one. Like, this is the one, I held it. I'm like, this is the one I'm going to play with. And he was like, but hold on a second. This is not really, you know, for you. And like, you're, you're the type of game. And I was like, no, no, no. Like, this is the, the racket I'm going to play with. And I hit with it in practice. Like, yeah, this is it. And I have never changed since. So, yeah. It's, it was, was love at first then. sight. Yeah, yeah it was but love it was a gut sight. instinct. And I love it. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was gonna say everyone I think that's used the pure drive has a bit of an origin story and even for me I didn't get a chance to play with that one but I was going into college again we're the same age so going into college around 2001 and <laughs> we won't say how old <laughs> um, and I, I had been sponsored by a brand and they'd stop making the rackets that I was using I tried every racket under the sun and then I got this one okay and no joke the first day I hit it I was like that's the one so yeah. very similar story but the fun part is like even like every different model that came out within the Pure Drive family, like even the latest one, like it still feels like it brings me back to this moment, right? Every to every one of them. So it's a really nice kind of, yeah, it's Christmas, nostalgic. right? Like it's it that's what it feels like. It's, Guilty um, pleasure. Yeah, yeah. It's super exciting. The excitement of like opening. Oh, what's it gonna be this time? And um, I love it. So yeah, it's it's really cool to see all this together. It's so amazing and they're celebrating 30 years of the Pure Drive, which is crazy. But I wanted you to maybe pick out some of your favorites and talk about some memories that you associate with some of the different versions. You can, it can be literally anything, whether it's winning a major or meeting your husband without, right. you know, Right, well like this anything. one makes me think about the age I was. So this is, my daughter just turned 16. Oh my gosh. So I was probably around the same age as she is right now. So that's making me feel very old. <laughs> <laughs> oh but um, yeah, that brings back memories. I mean, every one of them has, you know, a connection to it. Obviously this one, I won my US Open with. You can hold um, it. <laughs> you can pick it up, hold it, some memories. Yeah, I mean, they all, yeah. I close my eyes for a second, I feel it. <laughs> like it's, it's really cool. My grandma, she's still alive, she's 85 and she has one of them hanging up and I'm pretty sure it's, this model. It's like too many emotions entering. <laughs> Keep talking. I've <laughs> always <laughs> loved the brighter blue. Like, oh, sorry. yeah, this <laughs> one I like. I like this one. The new one that's coming out looks amazing with the silver. And have you heard the story about the paint jobs on these? I do not, please Well, from, tell me. <laughs> from what I understand, each one is super unique and it's been dipped in. So it, it's kind of like, a little bit of all of these pure drives coming together in the oh. 30th anniversary to celebrate 
pure amazingness. <laughs> wow. Right? Every single one's different, so you can see like lots of little details on it. Yeah. It I was awesome. wondering what, like when I opened them at home last week. And I'm, I'm sure Babalat might tell the story a little bit better than I just did, but <laughs> it looks awesome. It does. Right? Yeah, new, kind of the silver as well, the silver. Um... A little throwback too, yeah. a little nostalgia. Do you like, okay, so here's, the, here's the true question. If you could only pick one of these and that's the only one you can have for the rest of your life, which one are you picking? Uh, this one or this one? And tell me why. I mean, they all feel good, but the look? Maybe one of these three. I have not hit a ball with this model yet, so <laughs> I would say maybe this one too. <laughs> <That's more laughs> like all of them. I, we don't I, play yeah, by the rules. <laughs> I love that. Um, I'm pretty sure I got hired at Tennis Warehouse because of this racket. Oh, I, I wrote like three pages <laughs> on why I love the Pure Drive, and I think um, the owners read it and were like, "Wow, she's crazy, but we yeah, love it." Good. <laughs> like, right, bring her good in. for you. And I, yeah, so the Pure Drive is—it's so interesting how it's touched so much of our lives. Um, you mentioned your grandma has one of her, your rackets up. Do you keep some of your old frames? Like, do you have well, some of your older ones here? Not enough. Like, um, we, we moved to the States four years ago, and um, kind of now that we're settled in, I'm starting to kind of put some more work into decorating the home and the, and the basement. And so, um, like, my husband, he played basketball, and he's kept, like, all his jerseys from throughout his career, whether he was playing in Germany or in Poland or in Italy, like, anywhere. And... I never really did that with my rackets. Like I, you get so many requests of people that are like, hey, could you mind donating a racket or for an auction or for a good cause? And I was like, okay, here you go. Like, but I never kept anything for myself really. So I'm kind of like bummed. Um, Cause that would have been, I have this one wall that like I painted it blue. Um, it's like a little, yeah, where the kids can go out and relax. And um, so there's a bunch of basketball stuff, but I was like, wouldn't that be nice to have some of mom's rackets up there? Totally. So, anyway, maybe I'll we talk to Babylon yeah, and they see might if something's possible. <laughs> um, can you maybe talk to me? We just you kind of hit on the nostalgia, but what actually makes this frame so amazing? And why did you use it for your whole career? And talk to me like how your career evolved and you evolved with the Pure Drive and the Pure Drive evolved with you. Well, the most important thing is I never questioned it, right? Like I, yeah. like from the moment that I, played with it that I it just felt good it felt like an extension of my arm and I never doubted that oh is something wrong with my racket should I look into another racket I love that never did that so Which, many people like, do that so many do and it goes downhill and I'm like listen this is the most important tool that you can have on a tennis court and um yeah so I never never doubted my racket and you know, I've had people that say, oh, you know, maybe look at the string, maybe try a different tension mm -hmm. here and there. Like I've played around with that, but I've never doubted the racket. Um, and um, yeah, so just felt good and felt like I, it was, it gave me, you know, the type of swing that I wanted to hit, whether it was on the run, whether it was sliding into a shot. Like I just felt like it was an extension of my arm and oh, um, wow. smooth. Yeah. Yeah. Did, and did you stay pretty consistent with your spec through your career? Or did, did you play around with more weight in certain places? A little places? bit here and there. Uh, towards the later stages of my career, I definitely, um, yeah, tried to tweak a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm really not good at <laughs> um, feeling. I think I adjust myself pretty well to yeah. like changes, um, but it was more coming from outside sources and um, anyway. Um, you don't need to worry about it. You're just like, give me a racket, I got this. Give yeah, me my pure drive, I got this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. That, that's, um, that's kind of how I, how I felt. And I'm also very much, if it feels, you know, you're happy with it, it you have the results. And, and I mean, I, at one point, um, got a pretty big deal thrown at me from another company that was like, here we go, you rackets, clothing, everything together. And this is years ago. And, um, and I tried it and I think two minutes and I nope. flipped the racket into the fence and I said, listen, I don't care. I'm not even, don't even want to put anything in my head. This is it. This will win me more titles than anything. And it will come down to the same thing, you know, when it comes to a contract. So uh, this is, um, yeah, 
I love that. No, no questions ever. No questions ever. I even remember when I finished playing college and like, again, it, what makes this racket so cool too is there's so many different levels can, that can use it successfully. Right. I mean, clearly I'm not where you're at, but I obviously was always watching you and always thought you were so amazing. You just, <laughs> ugh. anyways, I'm again, fangirling, <laughs> sorry. Um, but when I finished college, it's like you're, you go into the real world, all of a sudden all your gear, you got to figure it out. So the, I got a brand deal from another competing brand and all I asked was, I need whatever racket that you have Closest. that plays with a pure drive, right? I didn't love it, fine. I, forward two years, I started coaching college. And so now I had the opportunity to get what racket that I wanted and influence players on the team. And right. so that was this racket for no me way. also, yes. Um, and I uh, definitely went straight back here and I knew exactly what I wanted. Um, I, I wish I took a picture of my driveway a few weeks ago. We had like a nice weekend in the cold uh, East Coast. and. Um, and my kids like put up the little tennis tennis yeah. net and uh, and they they have the little pure drive like oh rackets gosh. laying around and they're like hitting the balls all over the place and having fun and um yeah so it's a uh, it's a it's a nice kind of feeling because that goes back to like my sister and myself playing mm. on the driveway we were taking my mom's chairs kitchen chairs that was like the net you yeah know, we were putting them in the middle and we were pretending to be Steffi Graf Monica yes. Sellis and you know it's like yeah, you know, oh that's the, the fun part about getting older is there's so many great memories and thoughts that you can link to, you know, your kids and your your own childhood. So it's, um, yeah. So nostalgic. Cool. It is. Uh, you dabbled a little bit on uh, talking about using natural gut. Talk to me a little bit about your string setup, how it might have changed through the years and even what are you stringing with right now? Um, I mean, I would still use natural gut if, you know, today I would prefer that. I love the sound. Um, I'm very connected to the sound of how I hit my ball. Mm -hmm. Like I want it to sound very clean. It can have a little ding, like that little <laughs> zing to it. Um, yeah, so that's my preference still. Um, I've had people say, okay, try to combine it. I still use gut and, and then I have the, I don't even know what it's, um, what's it called? The, <laughs> I'm so bad. The brown string. RPM, yes, <laughs> RPM power, yeah. Oh yeah, that one's nice because it's it also is. softer. It is, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but I love the 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 feeling of like, you know, when you hit it clean and the sound of of natural gut, like it still brings me back to how I love to play tennis, like in my head, yeah. how I want it to feel. It's yeah, with natural natural gut. That's amazing. But I'm playing with the combination at the moment hybrid hybriding yeah. it yeah that, that makes sense um what else let's see i mean i could just spend hours talking to you about all of this and your gear um <laughs> i wanted to ask you also what are you seeing with the next gen of players right now is there someone that we should keep an eye on and who's inspiring you who reminds you of some how you kind of came up and who you got your eye on um I mean, there's so many like young, talented players that um, have settled their, you know, their their position on tour. Um, I mean, we saw, you know, a few years ago, we saw Leila Fernandez, Amarado Kanu, like playing, you know, for the U.S. Open final, and and them kind of, you know, finding their their um, their role on tour, right? Like when you're so young and you've never really had a, a big result, it's it's hard. All of a sudden, a lot of things get thrown at you, and mm -hmm. and um, and and your life changes. So it's been fun to to watch to watch them. Um, Coco Goff, it's been amazing to see her develop and and um, on and off the court. I see my daughter. Um, you know, she watches tennis, but she loves Coco. Like it's it's you know, it, she impacts so many kids even outside of of our of our sport. Yeah. Um, on the men's side, I mean, Alcaraz uh, <laughs> is, you know, so fun to watch. I've been fortunate to be courtside a few times when he won, you know, when he won the US Open and to listen, you know, Rafa had that racket speed. That's mm -hmm. incredible. It sounds like a whip. Um, but the combination that Alcaraz has too with the, the footwork and the squeaking of the shoes and, and then, you know, the, the racket speed and the movement is um, so fun. So to see, you know, the youngsters taking all these things that they saw on TV or in real life from Roger, Rafa, Novak and, and Murray and those guys like to, and you see that they're starting to combine all of those things yeah. and uh, it's um, 
yeah, that's really cool to see how tennis, you know, is still evolving, um, you know, and, and also on a physical level. I mean, it's, it's been fun to watch, like Sabalenka play and, and seeing her grow into, you know, a, a multiple Grand Slam champion, Iga. I mean, yeah, it's, um, it's a fun time to uh, be a tennis fan. It is a good time. And I have to ask, are you working with any players or coaching at all? Or, you know, giving, you've got such great perspective <laughs> and you're so positive and I'm sure you have all I the have, experience in the world. I have three kids on my own, two kids in Bel like from Belgium living with us. We have five kids. So oh my, my coaching goodness. is basically, it's not basketball, but like how to really, you know, help you know our kids to prepare for their games and recovery and like that's kind of where I'm I'm at um, I don't travel quite as much but I would like to get a little bit more into it we've had a busy season for our family mm -hmm. or basketball season I think I watch sometimes eight basketball games a weekend wow. which is yeah I hear like whistles at night when I go <laughs> to sleep so that's um, different but I really enjoy that as well um, so it's, it's it's really nice to be here and to see um, you know I'm constantly watching whether this you know, whatever's on TV the tennis tournaments and watching the live scores and trying to stay up to date with with the latest news and and try to watch some press conferences from the players um, but coaching you know I don't want to do a coaching job where I can't be fully committed mm -hmm. because I wouldn't like that if it was you know me as a player and, right. and that's not how I want to do things so um, I've held off. I've had a few really interesting uh, offers, but yeah, it's not the right time quite yet. I, that makes sense. You've got your hands full. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're doing amazing work <laughs> in that. Okay, so at this age now, I know personally I have been able to reflect and my perspective's changed a lot. So what about you? What would you tell your younger self or even if you're talking to someone, maybe they're on tour, maybe they're in college, maybe whatever, mm. maybe they're struggling you know, to find the positivity and come through it. What would you say? Um, I mean, that's, again, the good part about getting older is when I look back to my own career now is, is um, I think I was between 17 and 18 when I made, made, played my first French Open final. And I remember being so disappointed because I lost and I came so close to winning and I played Jennifer Capriati and, um, and you know, I thought, oh, what is this? What if this is going to be my only chance to maybe get through Grand Slam? And there's, you know, you always have those ifs and those doubts. and. Mm -hmm. But I just remember like really quickly afterwards is just to say, OK, keep going, like give yourself opportunities. And um, and and so I think that's probably the the, the inner voice of um, learning to to see the positive. Right. There is there can be losses and and in tennis, especially there's a lot of pressure mm -hmm. um, these days, not just on court, but also with a lot of off court things. And and it's. Um, yeah, it's just important to to keep focusing sometimes having, you know, longer term goals and and not just see things, uh, you know, the way that they are at the moment, not just black and white. But just try to, you know, see the long term vision and the long term goals. And and that's it. Um, yeah, that's probably the biggest lesson that I learned was that to not worry about the losses because it can sound you know, to a lot of people and I see it on tour. I mean, right. there's a lot of girls that I have conversations with, you know, or that the WTA asked me to, to, you know, to talk to when they're struggling about certain things. And um, a lot of it comes down to the, the doubt and the fear of, you know, can I, can I succeed, you know, from the expectations that people around me have and sponsors and family members and coaches and, and the team. And, and that for a lot of people is sometimes really hard to deal with. So, um, it's a matter of really enjoying the life and that's something that I really tried to do and it's something that my parents installed in me was, you know, like, it's a game. Tennis is a game. It started as a game. Right. It started because I really loved playing tennis and, um, and that's, that was the most important thing is to, to really enjoy myself and as I got older I really felt that like if I'm happy off court I can have the best results on court and that's, that was super important for me. And I think it shows you've been such an inspiration for so many generations of players and myself included. And even just watching you walk in and your eyes lit up to like see the rackets <laughs> and everything, you can just well, see I've your never passion. Seen this <laughs> combined. So this was, um, yeah, this is, yeah. A if nice, you want to, if we nice can revisit, moment. yeah. Any other ones that you want to talk about? Any other memories? Any, anything, any stories? Anything fun that is anything? coming out from any of these <laughs> there's so many i mean there's moments too where you know you talk to different players like 
from the from the Babalat family, whether whether it was with Rafa or with Annie Roddick mm -hmm. or Lina and I, like we've had conversations about the rackets with Agnieszka Radwanska. We like we you know like talk about the pure drive and there is a connection, although you're rivals, but there is a connection that you feel. And even now, like when I'm you know on social media and I see you know Babalat posts about a, like the Babalat players, you feel connected because totally. that's you know you were that kid you know years ago before there was social media, right? <laughs> so it's it's that connection stays and it's. Um, yeah, it's fun. It's uh, fun to be a part of. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with thank me and you. talking no, to me. Uh, this for sure checks off something on my bucket list. Aww, so thank you. I really <laughs> appreciate really it. And this was such a fun experience. And thank you to Babylon for bringing us all of these amazing pure dry rackets. They're going to have to make sure that they're all counted for because like, we might be sniping a few. <laughs> oh, I, this one I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just um, throw it yeah. right in the bag. Yeah, <laughs> <in the bag. laughs> <She's>, OK, bye. <laughs> She's like, I'm out of here. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that didn't, didn't hit the ground. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> that like might be one of one. <laughs> um, amazing. That's all we've got today. Uh, it's, check out the new Pure Drive 30th anniversary. How cool is this? I'm so excited. I can't believe it's been 30 years. I think also as someone our age <laughs> at this point, I don't feel my age. I don't know about you. Like it just doesn't feel. Depends <laughs> on what. <laughs> Maybe the body feels that age, but like the mind. Um, so it's so crazy to think that there's 30 years of rackets on this table and 30 years of memories and yeah. for so many players and this brand and this franchise of Rackets has just touched so many players, right. all ages, all levels, all over the world. So such a great opportunity to Thank chat you. with you, Kim. Good job. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. It's good? Yes. <laughs>